So nobody's talking about it, but this new strategy for Kawhi and PG just might actually work. Um, I've been reading some sources and things like that on different topics, but uh, I've been thinking about this topic specifically uh, because I think this is something that I think will work for the Clippers. And I've ultimately said it in my other videos or mentioned it, but not really went in depth about it like I am now. So, of course, I spoke on this before in regards to Ty Lue going on all the smoke saying that the Clippers are going to take the regular season seriously. And I've been said before, that's a good thing. But the Kawhi and PG strategy is to get them to play more within the regular season to better their chances of, you know, seeding and, you know, getting a rhythm and building that continuity and, you know, getting the other young guys acclimated with, you know, the superstar players and the other role players and everybody can build exactly the way they should. And hopefully that's a, a well, at least that's the plan, hopefully. And I think it's a good plan and all. And I definitely think um, it's it, it will benefit the Clippers in the long run. And Kawhi and PG with them playing a lot more games, I can see how some people might think, this could be a bad thing because, you know, their injury history states that they don't need to play more games because if they play more. They might get injured before the playoffs and neither one of them might show up in the playoffs to play or they might not even make it to the playoffs if both of them get hurt before the end of the season to where they can, like, you know, make any adjustments or, you know, before they can actually, you know, figure out a way to, you know, put things together and, you know, piece the team together and have everybody on the same page so they can gel and go a lot further in the playoffs and what they had the last couple of years, even though one of the years they did make it to the conference finals. But of course, their end destination is to make it to the finals and win it. So, I mean, if you're going to bare minimum make it to the finals, the strategy has to be strong and everybody has to be healthy as well. So with that being said, I definitely think going into this, going into this, this is going to be a, a crucial year for the Clippers because we also know, and me speaking on other videos, that the Clippers are one of the teams, if not the team, that has the most brutal schedule in regards to you know traveling. The Clippers have way more away games than they have home games this year, and you know the traveling for this team can be you know detrimental to them because, like I said, health, you know, fatigue, all that type of stuff plays a factor, and especially with the two players. The two star players that the Clippers have, they've been the most or one of the most unhealthy uh, players in the league, unfortunately. And, you know, it's very you know, unfortunate because due to that, you know, we've been lack and deprived of seeing, you know, the greatness of Kawhi and PG in big moments together enough to you know for them to go further in the playoffs it just hasn't happened but i mean of course it still can it's just that the health has to be on their side and so do the basketball gods and all the stars have to align now me personally even though with the away schedule and all the stuff that you know the clippers are going to have to endure doing more away games and you know being away from home a lot more it can definitely build a lot of character with this team and i definitely think it's a good way to build because of course you know clippers being at home of course you know that definitely is a plus but winning you know playing home games doesn't mean you're going to win those games it, it's no guarantee it just you know betters your chances but it's no it doesn't better the the chances of a guarantee happening that you're going to win so if the Clippers have to play more away games I'm all for it because I mean really there's no other way around it and the schedule is already made and the Clippers are going to have to just you know deal with what they got you know what I'm saying and with that being said playing more road games will be more tests probably probably for the Clippers because you know they're not at home they're not the comfortability of their own spot and they have to go the extra mile sometime to win away games because you don't have the crowd on your side and there's so many disadvantages going into an away game you know you have to almost play perfect basketball sometime you know to win those games or you can have ugly games but you have to find a way to manage them throughout the game and stay afloat unless the other team until the other team makes mistakes and you can go on a run and you know um, overpower that situation so the Clippers like I said with the star power and the firepower they have I think they'll be fine going on the road and if Kawhi and PG are going to play a lot of the games I think a lot of their road games will be challenging but I definitely think they'll be you know more than manageable because if you have Kawhi and PG on the floor it's not many teams that want to stand against them every night toe-to-toe -to -toe against them when they're on their game because they can pretty much they could beat anybody in the NBA if they're healthy and if they're together and if they're playing the way they're supposed to at the at the point in time when they need to. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. But, you know, building the chemistry with the young guys is really the main thing that I would like to see with the Clippers in regards to Kawhi and PG because 
the veterans on the team, they will figure it out because they've been in the league long enough and they know what their position is and they know what they need to do. And they don't really need to learn from anybody to figure out their position or to make them a professional, you know, be a professional at the highest level because they've already experienced that. So the younger guys like the, you know, Kobe Brown, those type guys, you know, they're going to definitely need the wisdom and the um, the strength and the, the, the mindset and all that. And just having Kawhi and PG around is going to bring all that that you know bring the the wisdom and the the knowledge and the know-how of what to do in situational situations and things like that and your star players have to be around to implement that they can't just be sitting on the sideline talking it they have to actually walk it by example leadership in which that's what Kawhi and PG is going to have to do and by Set an example with leadership, you know, they're going to have to be out there on the floor. And um, hopefully that's something that we see a lot more this year. And um, I feel unfortunate that we haven't seen it all throughout the time that they've been together. But this would be the season for them to do it, especially since a lot believe that this team is going to be 100 percent different in so many ways going into uh next season because they don't think Kawhi and PG or and a lot of the others are, are even going to be there so I mean this would be the season to make it happen and make it all go but um, hopefully for the main part Kawhi for the most part Kawhi is there more even more so than PG because with Kawhi on the floor the winning percentage is all at an all-time high you win a lot more games when Kawhi is there and Kawhi can He's just the best player. So, I mean, he, he makes things. He, 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 he just, you know, he, he interrupts the game in so many ways on offense and defense. He's just such a, a beast on both ends of the floor. You really cannot not have him on the floor at, at, at no time, to be honest with you. PG, you can't not have him on the floor either, but you can sacrifice him at times. If Kawhi is on the floor, they'll still win a lot of games because Kawhi is just a winner. That's just what he is. He finds ways to win. And like I said, he can change the game so drastically because of his defense and his offense and run off like a quick 20 25 points really easily i mean it's it's just crazy how he does that his bag is just different and then we all know that and we've seen it many a times so hopefully we see it a lot more this season during the regular season and into the playoffs now me if i have to project i want to say that Kawhi is probably you know what they're aiming at uh, i don't know specifically but i remember specifically when Kawhi was on the toronto raptors as i spoke about in my previous uh video earlier about when nick nurse he played about 60 or 59 games or something like that and a lot of people thought that year if Kawhi would have played you know about 70 games he possibly could have won the mvp that year or he would have been in the running for it a lot more than you know what he probably was because he didn't play enough games to really qualify for the MVP. But if you look at his numbers, averaging 27 points a game, things like that, you know, he, he was up there in MVP status. He just didn't play enough games. So, I mean, this is the year I think that he'll play around about the same 55 to you know, if, if, if they take the regular season serious and Kawhi can stay healthy enough, I can see him playing 55 to 60 games, you know, this season or maybe a couple more 50, you know, maybe 60, 62 games somewhere in there. If he can, you know, stay healthy enough, I don't think they would actually have even attempt him trying all 82 games or even nowhere near close because low management has to be implemented with Kawhi due to the fact that he's had injuries way before. You know, his engagements with the Clippers and Paul George, they might do around about the same thing with him. If he could stay healthy enough, maybe about 60, 65 games itself, rest a few, get in there. And then, you know, hopefully they could lock up some seating to where maybe they're like the first to the third or first to the fourth seed or something like that, which I think that's that really should be the direction. You know, try to hit that first to the fourth seed, lock it up, you know, rest your guys for about a week or two before the playoffs, you know, get a little rhythm. You know, things like that right before the playoffs and go in there and, you know, represent L.A., you know, in a different type way. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's, it's time for them to do that. And it's no excuses. And I know Ty Lue knows that. And honestly, he might not be here after next season either. So, I mean, this team could, be, this team could look completely different after next year. So they have got to go all in, give everything they got, push as hard as they can, play as many games, get as much continuity as they can and build on top of what they can to try to go after this championship. Because to me, I'm one of the ones who will actually agree with a lot of uh, people out there. This might actually be the final year of the Kawhi PG era. So if it is, I mean, go out with a bang and try to win the championship. But hey, that's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section and we'll talk about it.